Good afternoon. Look at these folks working from home. That's uh, some of our E911 team there. They are responsible for keeping more than 700 public safety agencies across the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic connected. Thanks to the work from our global uh, technology solutions team to move a hundred, over 100,000 employees working from home. You're seeing some of those folks uh, who are responsible for that now and, and working from home as well. Special shout out to all the folks who are, are watching us uh, via Twitter. Uh, that is the best way to watch this. And especially uh, Caroline, who I know is eating her peanut butter and jelly sandwich right now. Hey, Caroline, good to see you again, as always. A lot of extended families now part of the Verizon family, as we've talked so much about. But uh, we're going to be talking uh, more about uh, how we made that move to keep our employees connected and, of, co of course, can continue to keep our customers connected. But here we are, 1201 on the East Coast, 901. Uh, on the West and some of those folks you see there are also part of our Verizon India team. So uh, good evening to those folks joining us uh, around the world. So uh, let's jump right into it. Hans, good morning, good afternoon. How are you today, sir? Good morning, good afternoon. I'm doing good, uh, Jeremy. I hope you're doing well as well. And hi, all of you teamers. Uh, I hope you're fine uh, in these times. We call them unprecedented, and that's uh, for sure the right word of this. We have never seen anything like it. And uh, uh, I would like to start by talking about us employees and how we go through this process, uh, as well as talking about uh, the safe and healthy of all of us is the most important. Uh, and uh, all the mails and things that we get, me and Christy and Jeremy and the whole up for speed team are so important for us to to really formulate how we communicate and what we do during these times. And, and the Pulse survey, as you know, is uh, also up for an ending right now. And it takes 20 seconds, as you heard yesterday. I have already done mine, so hopefully you have done yours, because this is important that we get the feedback. But uh, again, and also our thoughts are always with our V-teamers and the extended V-team family that has been impacted by the corona uh, virus. Uh, Chris and the team are doing everything they can to support them and help them. That's so important. I also want to remind you that today is the one year anniversary of Verizon 2.0. It was actually one year ago we launched a new structure, a new, uh, a new way of working, uh, and uh, was a new leadership credo, etc. But we also created a new purpose. We create the networks that move the world forward. And that, it's hard to beat that in this time. Uh, that purpose that we created is more relevant than ever, that we create the networks that move the world forward. So uh, have that with you in your daily fights, wherever you're working and whatever you're doing today. Uh, talking about the networks, I mentioned a lot about the networks yesterday. We had our network release out yesterday. Uh, and uh, I had actually uh, a conversation together with a couple of other CEOs of tele telecom carriers in the U.S. Uh, with the uh, president of the United States yesterday. We discussed uh, the status of the networks. We, we discussed uh, how we're supporting the nation in these times. Uh, I can convey that uh, the president were very pleased with the, how the wireless, the internet uh, companies and the, uh, and the telecom companies have shown up in this process. And he extended a big thank you to uh, all the employees that are running the networks in this country as they're holding up so well. And they are life critical in many, in many cases. So I just want to convey that to you, that the president was very positive and supportive for what we have been doing so far in this crisis. But we also know that this crisis is not going over today. It's going to be long. So we, we have a long uh, uh, journey here with perseverance and the professionalism that we have in this company. Uh, I think we're going to continue to strive well in it. Uh, other than that, uh, I, I talked about the Pay It Forward uh, yesterday, uh, the big event we had yesterday night uh, with the gamers playing Fortnite. Uh, it was 2 million people live looking at it. So, of course, it was a big hit. Of course, it was probably a different uh, group of people looking at it than the week before when we had uh, uh, and the artists playing. So, But it's great. It's just showing how many people are showing up and supporting uh, small and medium businesses and paying it forward. 
and I think it's a, it's a really great event for people being home and, and doing great things. So I think that's that's a really uh, telling the story how we're engaging the society, how we take care of the employees, and how we think about our customers and our networks. And uh, and I see great work across the globe in all of them. And and I thank you all for doing it. And back to you, Jeremy. Thank you, Hans. I uh, appreciate the updates. I know some folks wanted to know how the conversation with President Trump went, so thank you for the update. So next, I want to switch gears uh, a bit to uh, Shankar, who leads uh, our technology team, uh, did uh, just a, a big effort, like I said earlier, to get a, a whole lot of people uh, to be able to, to work from home, work remote, and to do different things. So Shankar, uh, to you, uh, quickly for an update for the team, please. Thank you, Jeremy. Uh, let me uh, talk about this in three phases, if you will. Um, the first phase, our first area of focus was to pivot a majority of our V-teamers to the new way of working, essentially working from home. So we had to augment our uh, capacity in our VPN infrastructure. We expanded the number of uh, home-based agents across the business units and in GNNT. And uh, what's important to note here as well is for many of the groups, this was the first time we had enabled this capability to work from home. So we had to ship well over 5,600 imaged laptops. We are in the process of uh, uh, preparing another 5,500 for our retail team. We also spun up Citrix virtual desktops for more than 1,200 of our colleagues on their home computers. Uh, we also had to increase the capacity to support, support the uh, WebEx meetings, similar to the one that we have uh, right now. And a lot of work to, uh, uh, went into launching our internal COVID website, the, the supporting these up-to-speed live webcasts, Ask Christie capability, et cetera. And almost all of us in GTS right now across the globe are working from home. In the US, we went into this model working from home on March 12th. And we have a sizable team in Verizon India and we used the opportunity to also prepare for the same arrangement in Verizon India if needed. And as we expected, we received a government directive in India to have our uh, India employees also work from home starting March 20th for 21 days. And we were able to quickly pivot our uh, India operations to this model as well. And uh, we would not have been able to accomplish uh, all of this in such short order without a great team effort across the board. And I'm so proud of how our teams in GTS, the infrastructure and platform services teams, the digital workplace team, the end user support team, and the help desk teams, both in the domestic and international, our network and unified communication teams, the uh, CIO portfolios, and our Verizon India team, how they all responded to this crisis with a can-do attitude and developed uh, creative ways to solve these problems. I also would like to recognize our uh, business partners in the business units and GNNT, legal, information security, corporate security, HR, for being in the trenches with us every step of the way as we were design, uh, devising these solutions. As it says in our credo, we run to a crisis, not away, and our teams demonstrated just that. Another important point also is over the past few weeks, uh, the digital dexterity of our company has improved as well. Let me share with you some data points on how our V-teamers are embracing the new ways of working. So at this point, we have over 115,000 of our colleagues enabled to work from home. And the daily VPN concurrent users, this is something that we track, has increased 130%. Used to be 28,000, now it's at 64,000. We are seeing a 22% increase in the number of WebEx meetings, a 350% increase in the number of Google Meet meetings, a 30% increase in Jabber chat messages, and also a 12% increase in voice calls using the Jabber soft phones. Another point to make here is we are being very proactive about security during this time. So as you can imagine, the threat actors are stepping up cyber attacks and we blocked 120% more malicious sites since we launched our work from home. And a public service announcement I would like to give, uh, even with all these stronger technology controls, every one of us working from home must still exercise good judgment to keep our enterprise secure and watch out for phishing attacks, social engineering schemes, et cetera. And now that we have enabled our colleagues to work from home, the focus now is to make sure that everybody is as productive as they can be in this configuration 
So we're monitoring the top call drivers that are coming into our help desk, mostly around VPN, login assistance, secure pin reset, duo uh, token setup and activation, connectivity issues in the last mile with the ISPs. So our help desk teams across the globe are doing everything possible to address these queries in a timely manner. And uh, it's good to also see many of our V-teamers are, are taking advantage of the self-help knowledge-based articles, and we're seeing a 38% increase in the use of these self-help tools. The second phase of it is where we are enabling the shift in the business processes. We all heard from Krista and Kevin last week about all the changes that's going on in their respective businesses. For instance, ISPU only in retail, service by appointments only, shifting the transactions to digital, additional 15 gig for consumers, waiving late payment charge, reducing repair dispatches, and so on. Our application teams have been working round the clock to enable these changes quickly for our customers. We've also run payroll cycles, which is which I'm sure everybody would uh, would uh, uh, agree is, is is somewhat important, with no issues in a fully remote working model. And at this point, we are working with our finance partners as well to the month end and quarter close with everyone uh, involved working from home. And the third phase, I would say, is staying the course on our key priorities. While we reevaluate the priorities, shift resources. We're not skipping a beat when it comes to 5G, One Fiber, IEM, the transformation programs, the customer experience programs, and the software releases to keep our business moving forward. Uh, we are an AND company, and we can not only focus on what matters now, but also anticipate what's next and see uh, that this crisis, this current crisis, is a major turning point and the competitive situation. Shankar. Uh, Thank you so much for yeah, that. Thanks to uh, all of them that your, your teams are doing there. Gonna have you mute out there for a second, though, Shankar. I think we're getting some feedback from you. So uh, thank you for that. Uh, now I want to get over to, uh, to Christy uh, and updates uh, from you today. Good afternoon, Christy. Good afternoon, Jeremy. And to all the V teamers out there, thanks for tuning in. Uh, we get uh, great joy out of knowing how many of you were able to reach and be a source of constant info for you and great to hear from Shankar with us today. Those 115,000 V-teamers that are enabled to work from home is a really key focus for us right now. And so you heard from Shankar, we're looking at all of our KPIs and productivity and making sure that people have the access they need while staying safe in terms of accessing the network. Um, but now we're also looking with our virtual training to make sure team leaders know the best practice tips for running virtual teams, how to manage uh, work remotely and also doing rapid cycle training for folks that are doing their job in new and different ways or potentially taking on new work assignments. So uh, really a very, very exciting time now. We've made the pivot. So now that we know we're going to be operating like this for a number of weeks longer, we want to take our game up and uh, continue to drive hitting our KPIs from how we were operating before this situation. In addition, uh, today, a couple of things closing out at the end of today for the retail employees, about 16,000 folks got uh, a survey sent to them and we heard from 15,000 already. So for the last few of you out there, if you haven't had the chance, please do so. Uh, Krista and the leadership team for uh, consumers actively awaiting your input so we could plan the next phase of uh, continuing to service all of our customers and meet all of the needs in our new revised footprint and means of engaging with our customers. Also, you heard Hans mention the Pulse. So we already heard from uh, over 100,000 of you, but we'd love to hear from all of you. And we'll be really excited to share all those results with you later this week. Lastly, just a few quick reminders. Um, yesterday, we launched an up-to-speed app. So if you want to catch on to that app and be able to see all of our up-to-speed things, that's there for you. And it's also got a link to the COVID-19 webpage, our continued source for everything you need to know about what's going on with coronavirus. And finally, you heard Hans mention it's the one year anniversary of our new Verizon 2.0 and our new ways of working. And so if you have an example of how you feel you've adapted to these new ways of working, especially with the COVID response, drop it to the Ask Christy box because uh, we're developing some podcasts and some uh, material to share out with all the V-teamers how people are supporting the customer, driving teamwork, empowerment, agile and new ways of working. and. What we've done over the last two to three weeks is just complete evidence that here we sit on the one year anniversary, completely demonstrating the new ways of working launched with uh, Verizon 
Thanks. Back to you, Jeremy. Hey, Christy, thanks so much. And yeah, big plug there for the Inside Verizon app that is available on uh, Apple and Google Play stores. Currently, I've been using it for uh, a little while while we we're testing it to make sure everything worked great. And uh, thanks to the, the team for, for launching that and getting it out there. Another way for us to stay connected, so important there. So we talk a lot about uh, today, the folks who are working from home. We also can't forget um, our techs and the, the folks in the field who continue to do that as well. And now they're doing uh, what's called garaging from home. We've talked about it, but now we wanna show you how it works. We caught up with a few techs uh, throughout the past couple of days and uh, have a look. So I'll get about 5.30 to get my lunch ready, check my work here, and I'll go right from here to the customer's location. I love it. You know, I don't, I don't mind it at all. It saves me a trip to the garage every morning. They're, they're taking our health and the social distancing into consideration. By having our trucks at home, we're not around 60 other techs at the garage. So, you know, it's the best way for someone like us who actually still has to go out to avoid contact with other people. I'm really happy that they put this in place. My perspective has always been like safety first, health first you know, before the pandemic. And if this is helping us do social distancing as far as not going into the garage or having too many of us in the garage and it's helping out, I'm all for it. I think it's crucial that we're providing a means of communication and uh, information for the customers, especially in the time of crisis. They depend on us. Uh, look at some of uh, how our folks are working out there in the field and sharing what they're doing uh, every single day to keep our customers connected uh, while, while they're doing that. Um, do appreciate them sharing those stories. And you can always share any stories with us. Uh, just use emails at live at verizon.com. Uh, and, and we're taking a look at those. Now I want to switch gears, though, to uh, some of uh, the questions that have come in. Shankar, I want to start with you. Certainly, you, you mentioned VPN. Uh, David Billadu down in Irving, Texas, he, he, you know, he says sometimes he's still experiencing some drops and things when he's using Jabber. What's being done to make sure that uh, everything is uh, rock solid with the VPN so we all can stay connected? Thanks. Thanks for the question. Um, so clearly from a VPN standpoint, there were several things that uh, we have completed already to support our 115,000 employees now who are working from home. A few things that we have done is we have increased the number of VPN appliances in our data centers. Uh, think of it, these are the, uh, the network devices that with the enhanced security features, uh, whether it be the firewall protection, load balancing, et cetera. We've also increased the number of licenses, but prior to this crisis, we had 80,000 licenses. Now we are equipped to handle 180,000. Also, the entire value chain uh, for VPN has been fortified. Uh, I'm sure folks who are using VPN are familiar with the Duo multi-factor authentication tool. We had to augment the capacity there as well. We have doubled the bandwidth uh, of the ISP circuits that are coming into our data centers as well. Oftentimes what we find when folks have problems with VPN is also the last mile connectivity. So on, the, on our end, we have doubled the capacity from 10 gig circuits to 20 gig circuits coming into our data centers with redundancy. So these are a few things that we have completed. The other thing on the question in terms of uh, specifically with Jabber and WebEx, at times we do have challenges with uh, these collaboration tools. These are all running in the cloud. And we have regular checkpoints with Cisco uh, uh, who, who supports uh, WebEx and Jabber. Uh, and uh, they are seeing a significant spike, as you can imagine, worldwide in terms of this volume. There are a few bugs in this process that we have identified as well that they are working on addressing for us. Great. And I, I want to follow up with you, though. You talked about moving so many employees over and, and looking at what was happening here in the States and then what was going to happen in India. How did you get the teams engaged in that, Shankar? What, what was going into to making all of that happen? You gave some big numbers. Yeah, actually, this is a very good question, uh, Jeremy. So this is one, uh, see, in, in, in IT traditionally, uh, we have well-defined playbooks when it comes to high availability and disaster recovery. And everyone in technology are familiar with this acronym, H-A-D-R. And what this is, is this is mainly focused on how applications can recover in the event of a hardware or software failure, or how you recover a data center if disaster were to strike. 
And we exercise these uh, high availability and disaster recovery plans on a regular basis through uh, drills. One important thing to note, though, is in these drills, the endpoints where the applications are used in these scenarios were always assumed to be static. We never had, for that matter, the industry never had a playbook for a scenario where virtually all the endpoints are changed and have to access the same applications in the private data centers or the public cloud. And what I'm most proud of is my team uh, did a fantastic job in writing the playbook for this scenario on the fly without much disrupt business disruption. And there were a few things that really helped us uh, get here. All the investments that we made in automation and the use of public cloud, uh, we use AWS public cloud, and that has been a big help for us to really spin up additional inst instances in the case of uh, uh, Citrix virtual desktops, for example. Uh, so that way we don't have these long lead times to get this provision in our data centers. We moved most of our call centers to virtualization technology as well. And that helped us very quickly pivot the organization to this new mode of working. And uh, suddenly the use of cloud-based collaboration tools like WebEx, like Google Meet, has also been a big help for us to be able to uh, pivot the organization. And our team took advantage of uh, all these tools in our toolbox and came up with uh, creative ways to solve the problems that we encountered. Always looking for good ways to do new things. Thanks for sharing that. Uh, uh, Christy, I want to jump over to you and, and talk about some of the questions that continue to come in for you. Uh, one is asking about, you know, as we see states extending the uh, the stay at home times, we're going to reevaluate the uh, vacation time policy. That's one that came in from uh, Dietrich down in Ashburn. Great. Thanks so much. I think what we have focused on right now is devising a way for everybody to be able to stay actively engaged and be able to contribute from home. So, and also we created caregiver leave and alternative work arrangements uh, for folks with underlying conditions so that people didn't have to uh, rely on their vacation time for things like this. But I know some of you have asked, are the caps for the year for the carryover is gonna be adjusted? And we have adjusted those. And that information is on the COVID webpage. And then finally, we're updating the COVID webpage to also highlight what are the current, um, you know, kind of general guidelines by region of the world if they exist for what we're anticipating. And since the situation changes practically daily, uh, we're going to be constantly updating that. Thanks for that question. Good, Christy. Thank you so much for that, uh, and a lot of updates uh, around today. Hans, uh, what are your your final thoughts as we're wrapping up our our uh, our midday uh, meetups here? Uh, first of all, I have to say the response of the GTS on, on our IT demands is, is something that we should be proud of. I told you that I talked to many of the largest corporations in the in, in the US and around the world. Uh, I think what, what Shankar and his team has done in this short term, uh, uh, getting so many work from home in, a, in, in, in with good technology. That didn't come from a week's planning. That comes from years of planning uh, the IT infrastructure. So I thank you all for uh, have done that because that means that we can continue to work as normal. I'm, I'm especially happy to hear in the increase on WebEx meetings, Jabber meetings, Hangouts, because that tells me that all of you are engaged in working and then, of course, Christy is working on for the ones that doesn't have a, a job task because it's not uh, suited for working from home. We're also working with both the, the job exchange. And then you heard uh, Rose yesterday talking about uh, the uh, virtual volunteerism. So we, because I think it's important again that we we engage ourselves and continue to work in these uh, times which are unprecedented and. and and uh, it's so critical and, and uh, et cetera, so that we have that. So I, I thank the, the whole IT team for doing that. Then I, I, I just need to remind us all of our frontline employees that is out there. And it's great to see this uh, garage from home and that we take the precautions every day and evaluating what we can do, do better all, all the time. And I, I think that that's so important for us to keep that health and safety at the same time as we need to serve critical infrastructure, uh, keeping up the network. So uh, I think that's uh, that's very important. And then uh, we all are now coming into a third or fourth week or fifth week at working from home. Uh, I get questions, you know, so how do you keep up the energy? 
uh, of course, the energy comes for me that uh, leading this organization and these fantastic people, it comes a lot from that. But I also try to actually get out some now and then and get some fresh air. And of course, I try to exercise quite a lot because I think it's important to, to continue in the normal rhythm in order to get that energy uh, that you is so needed. Uh, before we end, I, 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 I want to say something personal. I mean, uh, today is actually my third three-year anniversary at Verizon. I, um, I signed my papers to join this company 1st of April for three years ago. I, however, I asked them to announce it the 2nd of April because somebody might believe it was an April Fool's. But uh, for me, it has been three fantastic years and um, I, I have no regrets for joining this company and the uh, fantastic people and the support we're doing. And uh, uh, it, uh, I had only had one employer in, in my life previous to this. And uh, I didn't even have plans to have a second one. But now when I know uh, how great this company is and the consideration I did, I, I feel extremely proud of being leading this company. And I feel that this anniversary is an important milestone in my career, uh, especially as we have these tough times as, uh, as we have right now. So it's a big day. It's the one year anniversary for, uh, for uh, Verizon 2.0. It's, it's my personal three year anniversary. And uh, um, I can only send my gratitude to all of you that are working today for Verizon and doing the so important work. And so that will be my ending comment. Uh, great day. I'm, I'm blessed to work for the company and I'm blessed to work with all of you guys. Back to you, Jeremy. Ah, thanks, Hans. And uh, you stole my thunder. I was gonna, I was gonna do, hey, happy three years, Hans. When we met two years ago, <laughs> I pulled you into a hallway and said, hey, you got sixty seconds on the clock. Some random questions. You're, I'm not gonna do it again now, but happy three years. And I, I have to echo what you're saying earlier. Uh, and uh, we get uh, so many emails after each of these, uh, each of these shows, uh, specifically thanking you and Christy and and the other leaders who are joining to talk about how people feel so connected to the company. I, I mean, it's like every day I've been here for, an employee may say I've been here for 18 years and I've never felt more a part of this company. And I, on behalf of the uh, all the employees around the world, I just want to thank you and all the leaders uh, for, for doing what you're doing um, and happy third anniversary as well. <laughs> uh, that, that's you. great. And, and another interesting anniversary this week, uh, 20 years this week since Verizon Wireless came to be uh, you know, Bell Atlantic Corp and Vodafone combined their interest with GTE uh, back uh, 20 years ago. Uh, and that's what created Verizon Wireless. And later this year, we'll celebrate 20 years of Verizon being what it is. So a great company with a great legacy, doing great things for people. Speaking of great things for people, uh, you mentioned staying active. Last night, uh, go and roll the video, Chris. Uh, Jim DiBattista, our local uh, manager of IM and construction down in Springfield, Mass. Well, guess what? He won the biggest loser. Congratulations to Jim, back on the job, uh, working hard uh, to keep his team going. But how about that? He lost 144 pounds to win the show. And since the show, another 12 pounds down. What an inspiration for all of us. Uh, just great things to see there. So uh, do appreciate everyone joining us every day. We'll be back with you tomorrow at noon Eastern. This afternoon on Verizon News on Instagram, you can hear from Tammy Irwin, leader of the Verizon Business Group. And we do read your emails. Yesterday, I got a request, hey, the Credo video means so much to me. It fires me up and it gives me purpose. So I want to end our show today with the Credo video. Thank you all. We'll see you tomorrow. Behind the firsts, the triumphs, the accolades. Behind all the solutions we provide, the experiences we create all we've built over the years. Behind our culture, our purpose, our commitment to social responsibility. Behind every check, everywhere, big or small, is a team of people with a set of beliefs. Everything we do, we build on a strong network foundation. We focus outward on the customer. We deliver superior customer experiences. We embrace diversity. We are committed to do the right thing. 
We run to a crisis, not away. We act fast and take risks every day. We share our success with the community. This is our Verizon credo. It's a set of values. About how we show up. Each and every day. And it goes to the heart of who we are. How we treat each other. How we serve our customers. How we relate to the world. This is our Verizon credo. And it's behind everything we do. Thank you.